in GDP, everything is added up. So GDP really is like a little bee move, flapping its wings, you know, and GDP measures how fast you flap the wings, but it doesn't give you any sense of direction where the bee is going, if it's going to hit the wall, or if where is it going to go. You can finance your development by depleting your resources. That is, you can eat away your capital and think that that is development and that is really not development. That's just eating away capital. Environmental accounting is important for Australia because it, it helps people make better decisions about the, the resources which we have and how to use them. And, and in particular, I'm thinking about water. Australia is a big country. It has some water in the north, but we are subject to a lot of droughts. When we don't have enough water, people have to decide how the water is used and what it can be used for. And in that, they need to make some decisions. How much water goes to agriculture, how much water can go to other industry, and how much water can go to uh, households for drinking. Uh, these are all very important, very big decisions. Uh, and the accounts help you understand what you are getting from the use of the water and what will happen if people don't get water. There are numerous examples already going around the Philippines uh, just by protecting a, a mangrove, uh, how it impacts the community and how it helps the poor in general. Example would be uh, an area in the Philippines in the north where they spent about 100 million pesos for a seawall and beside it is a, a mangrove uh, which was only you know, uh, planted by just 2 million pesos when the two typhoons um, happen in those areas, the seawall that was worth 100 million was destroyed and the mangrove forest continued to, to exist and it actually protected the community behind it. As I say, if you're managing the natural resource, you have to take into account the environmental goods and services produced but also the commercial goods and services produced. And only putting them on the same even level, you can take into account all the trade-offs available. We have to know what our nature and our natural capital is worth, just as we know what our commodities are worth. Our commodities market is growing so quickly that we need information to put on the table for our dialogue with other sectors. Specifically, in the next few years, mining and oil will be of great interest. And we do have to make some decisions in determining land use and where to put our, our, our exploration and our resources and how we treat the, the strategic ecosystem services that are many of them placed in the same um, areas as some of our biggest mines or oil fields. Botswana is one of the countries that has done really well, where the uh, revenues from uh, diamonds particularly have been reinvested into manufactured capitals. We talk about roads, buildings, schools, clinics, as well as in building up your uh, social and, and, and human capital by way of uh, skills and, and into, uh, into knowledge. Uh, investment. So they've done really well, but the diamonds of course are, uh, are running out. And the idea of course is that the economy gets uh, diversified and uh, we're looking at whether the natural resources uh, can contribute to that uh, diversification. Madagascar also is known, well known as uh, the next frontier in terms of uh, mines, uh, very important uh, deposits of uh, nickel, titanium, vanadium, uh, you name it. So the choice before the decision maker is very difficult. How to, how to balance, uh, what, what are the choices? Uh, to what extent uh, should we uh, exploit the, the mines without uh, uh, endangering the, the livelihood of uh, rural people? Uh, and that's why we need environmental accounting and nature service valuation, because we need to have a direction the, to provide the economy. And that direction for the economy is to build more consistent wealth and not destroy the natural capital.